Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys, and today I want to talk about the new Nikon Z9 firmware update 4.0 and one of the really, truly incredible features that is part of this update for wildlife photographers and others. So stay tuned to find out what that is right after this. As I'm recording this video, I am actually taking wildlife images at the same time. Now stay tuned. I am going to show you we're going to go out together. We're going to go live. I'm going to show you this firmware update. Then I'm going to actually bring the memory card right to the computer and we're going to see if it captured anything. I got my fingers crossed. I feel pretty good about this after playing around with it in my office and seeing how this worked. But let's talk about what this, this firmware update did specifically for wildlife photographers, but also is going to have some practical applications for others. Now, there were some minor tweaks in here. So there were definitely some movie tweaks, uh, the 3D tracking, little tweak there. But the, the major tweak was about this, this auto capture mode and, and what this thing is capable of doing. The timing of this was, was actually bizarre. I had reached out to a couple companies who sold products I'll call them camera traps or motion triggers or, or sensor triggers. But basically, these are third-party devices that you put on your camera. They monitor activity. It could be light or sound or movement. And then you tether it, you cable it to your camera. And when that event happens, it tells your camera, go ahead and start taking pictures. Now, as I'm reaching out to companies to explore this, this update comes out. And I, I look at this incredible feature. And I thought, this is essentially in many ways, a camera trap. It works differently. So I'm going to explain how this works to you. I'm going to show it to you in the menu. And then we're actually going to go outside and see how this is set up. And, and I hope I get something because it's going to be really cool if I do. Okay, so how does it work? Essentially, what you're doing is you're opening up the camera permanently. So you're not turning it off. Generally, the mirrorless bodies will go to sleep after 30 seconds or a minute. In this case, when you start this function, it's going to turn the camera on and leave that sensor open so that the lens is going to provide the light to the sensor all the time. And now what it's doing, unlike what a DSLR could do, but a mirrorless camera does have the ability to do that. It's going to use the sensor as basically a motion detector. So it's going to read the object, read the image. And then when things change, and I'll show you the parameters that you can put in here, but as things change, the, the sensor itself becomes a motion device. And if it detects movement, it triggers the camera to start taking pictures. There are some parameters out there. So essentially, the Z9 has become capable on its own sensor of being a motion capture device. It's really, really cool. And like I told you before, it's actually doing its job right now as I'm recording this. It's out there attempting to find motion and take pictures. Couple caveats with this one. It does have to be left on. And because of that, you are exposing that battery to a longer drain time. So I played around with this. I've read it's going to be between two and four hours. I'm going to leave it out there for a solid two hours to try to see how many images it can pick up in two hours. I'll let you know when I get back what the memory time is for that battery once I come back. So after two hours, I'll let you know, is it 50% or 30% or is it is it completely cooked? So that's how it works. It is where, again, the sensor is now becoming a motion detection device with some parameters that you can set up. Now, I've got a camera tethered here. I'm going to switch over my view. I'm going to show you exactly where this menu is located, how to set it up. Then I'm going to take it out in the field. I'm going to start the program right in the field with you live. And then we're going to see what happens. All right, so here we go. Let's get into the main menu. Okay, so I've pulled up the shooting main menu. And I'm on auto capture. Let me just show you where this is located. So if you were just to open up this setting from the beginning, you would start with the shooting bank menu as your first option. You could scroll down to the end. I'm going to scroll up and I'm just going up one. It's the last option available. It says auto capture. So this is that movement or motion detection mode. I'm going to scroll to the right and you'll see that there are some presets that you can actually assign. Haven't assigned any yet, but if you wanted to, you could assign some there. And we'll go back one, and I'm going to go to just start. So not a lot of options here. Now, when I go to start, it pulls up some settings that I can adjust. This first setting, and I'll click yes or OK, it says motion, detection, and distance. I can choose, if I choose distance, I'll have the option to set some parameters on where the camera would capture uh, in terms of distance. I'm not going to set that. 
I'm just going to use motion and detect for now. And I'll go back one using that information or that I button. And now because I have motion and detected, I've got a couple of parameters that I can choose. So for motion, I get the speed and the subject size. I also get the direction. So I'm going to hit the zoom out or the minus key. And you can see it gives me these directional arrows. So it actually predicts where that movement is going to come from. I'm satisfied there. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go back one more. Now the next will be the subject size. So I can change that. And I can also go down to the subject type. I'm going to leave it in auto. So this will detect faces essentially. I'll go back again. Now the only other parameter I have that's really important, there's two more parameters, but this one's really critical. And, and this is the recording time, how many frames you're going to shoot. So what I'm telling it now is when it sees motion, go for two seconds. I'm setting it 10 frames per second. So essentially, as soon as it sees motion, it's going to rattle off 20 frames. The beautiful thing about these mirrorless bodies, you can set it to silent or, or virtual silence, and you can get almost no disruption of the subject with noise. It's really, really pretty impressive. Once it shoots 20, it will wait a set amount of time before it shoots 20 more. So I'm going to set this to, uh, let's set it to one second. Okay. So that'll be my settings. Now, the only other thing available is area. Now, it's important to note, you'll only get this setting if your sensor has every sensor point open. So I've got it all open now, meaning you're using the widest sensor. And then you, it's pretty interesting, you get to pick and choose. So you could say, don't use these but use others. So everywhere that's red, it's going to eliminate those and it's only good. So you get to take that thing and you get to say, just pick these. What this is helpful for is let's say you want the subject in the middle. You want to open it all up, but you, you've got some movement off to the side. Could be leaves or branches or other things moving on the side. You can delete those pixels so it won't see them and it'll just focus on the area that you want. I'm going to go back. Uh, here we go. And I'm going to change the target area in just a second. And it will eliminate that option. So if I go to the next setting, which is I, it puts me now ready to shoot. You can see I've got all of the sensors open and I've got a start and end function. I'm going to switch this up a little bit. And you see as I'm scrolling through these focus points, I'm going to select a large focus point. So something like this. Now, I'm going to run outside and set this up. Um, I've already done this part, <laughs> so I'm going to go back in time a little bit. As I set this up, I recorded it. And let me show you what that looked like through the camera. Okay, now, so this is the actual menu. I'm out in the field. Now, I did this before. I recorded this to show you the setup. I'm going into start, and here's this display I just showed you in my office. This is the display that you're looking at. It's got the motion, the speed. I hit the record button. And now I'm just going to, I'm going to change the focus area. You can see I'm using a smaller box. I'm not opening up all the settings. And again, I just wasn't sure. So I'm playing around a lot. Now I'm going to hit that record button. And when I do that, everything pops up. All of the settings are there. I'm shooting at 10 frames a second, 101, uh, 250th of a second. I'm going to test it with my hand. Uh, I think I stick my face in. There we go. Just to see if everything's focusing and working. And you can see I'm auto ISO so that ISO is going to drop up and down. I'm at F2.8. All of these settings may change. Again, I'm very new to this. I just want to see, does it work? And now I've, it's been two hours. So I'm going, to, I'm going to run out there. I'm going to grab the memory card. I'm going to come back. I'm going to play it for you live. We're going to see if it works. I'm really excited about this. Uh, so let's, let's go grab it and see what happens. Okay, so this now I've put the memory card in. I, I actually see some birds already. I'm, I'm using a program. Um, this is called Fast Stone Imaging. It's very similar to another one's called Photo Mechanic. And I use these to cull images. It, it takes raw files and it actually previews them very, very quickly. So a free tip for you. If you're looking to cull images, this is one. Um, I, I pass this tip, I think, on all my Patreon channel. I don't know if I've done that on YouTube, but here's a free one for you, YouTube. It's called uh, Fast Stone or Photo Mechanic. They both have a similar function. Photo Mechanic may be a little faster, by the way. Uh, Fast Stone, I believe, is free. Okay, so here's what happens. I set it up, and I'm gone. I am no longer there. I'm actually recording the video that you saw earlier. Um, and here we go. So here comes some motion, right? So this is a cat bird, uh, one of the, the more popular yard birds I have here. So he was only there for a second. That's one bird. You can see him hop off. Didn't get great focus. He wasn't there very long. 
and I'd have to dial this in. It looks like, you know, it, I might have been too close. The lens might have been too tight. So that, that's something I could play around with in the future. I had this really, really, really close. It's hard to tell until you play around with this how big to get it. But again, this is the fun stuff. This is the trial and error. Um, here we go. So we've got another cat bird came in. Could be the same one. But this is moments later. And let's see. Got an F2.8. The depth of field is going to be really shallow. But you could definitely see. Let's see. Okay, just missed focus there. Close. Yeah, that F2.8, the, the focus is so shallow. There it is. Boom. Just really, really neat. I was taking that as I was recording this. Nothing to do with me. I wasn't there. No camera trap, uh, nothing else. This is just the actual image. Uh, so that's another bird. That's two birds. Let's see what else we have. He was there for a long time. Oh, my gosh. I have about 50 frames of him. Just, wow, just frame after frame of him. Let's see if he hops off. Okay, there he hops off. Another, oh, so he went down, took a bath. He came back up. It's interesting now because his head is turned away. We probably aren't going to get focus here. We get focus on his tail. So you can see that's what's facing the camera. So that's that's okay. That's going to happen. There he is. Neat little pose there. You see the light changing a little bit in the background. This is another cat bird. This is a different one. I got several cat birds around. There's probably two. I'm showing you maybe three or four so far. It's probably two cat birds they tend to travel in pairs. Oh, that's a nice that's a nice pose. Look at that. Really nice. And I'm sure one of these, he's up there for a minute. I bet you I've got one. And if I dialed in these settings a little bit, uh, shutter speed's probably a little slow. Seems to be picking up the breast. There it's getting the eye pretty close. But again, I'm not there. <laughs> and I could keep playing around with these settings. I just wanted to see, does it work? And it, obviously it does. Oh my gosh, I got like 50 photos of him just sitting here. So obviously I'll find some sharp stuff in here. This is really, really cool. This is I, the first time I'm seeing this. It's really, really cool. Here he comes again. Now he's, again, that one took a bath. So I'm going to get the tail again. There he spins around. So maybe I'll get the eye in one of these frames. Hundreds of frames here. Hundreds of frames. This is two hours worth of video or two hours worth of stills. And I have literally, I just got, I'm, I'm just giving you a preview of it. I've got hundreds of frames here. I'm scrolling through about 10 frames at a time just to give you an idea. Uh, curious if there's any other birds coming in. No, just cat birds so far. What else? Oh, this is, oh, here we go. Okay, there's a little Oriole. Uh, it looks like I got maybe 10 frames. Oh, nice. Very nice. So I got about 10 frames of an Oriole. It looks like maybe a juvenile. Uh, it's not one of the bold males. There he is taking a bath and coming back. So I get the back of him. And this part's a little long, so I apologize. I'm just excited. I want to see how many. There's a Robin. I got a uh, black wing or a red winged blackbird. Again, the camera's too tight, so I'll have to play around with this. I had this camera set up right on top of the perch. This is, a, by the way, this is a hundred millimeter lens. I was using my macro lens. It was just what was on there. I I should have loosened this up a little bit. I'll play around and get it a little looser. Wasn't sure what was going to land on there. There's a cat bird wet. I'm sure I have some sharp images. I would guess I've got a several hundred images. Uh, I got the three. I got four species in two hours. And just hundreds of frames. There he is again. Hundreds of frames. Mostly of this cat bird. But I'm sure I'll get something soon. Um, at the end of the video, you know what, for fun, I will clean one up. I'll edit it. I'll put it at the end of this video. But um, yeah, let's just run back and talk about this. So I, that was really cool for me. Again, everything was live. Uh, I hope I didn't bore you by showing you too many pictures. I wanted to get an idea of the depth in two hours of the number of pictures that it took. It took several hundred I, I'm going to ballpark eight episodes, which is just about right. It seems like about every 15 minutes or so, about four an hour birds come in. Um, probably more came into the pool area, but they literally came onto this perch. This perch has become one of their favorites. They typically land here, bathe, and jump back. There's a couple other perches around, but I took the other perches away because I just wanted them to land here. It's a lot of fun. You can change... You can change the perches, you can change the lenses, you can adjust the background, you can do a lot of neat thing with these home setups. It's not typically my favorite thing, but however, the application goes well beyond the home. I mean, you could take this out in the field. Now, a couple caveats. I ran this for two hours, the battery ran to 50%. That's almost exactly what I would have expected based off of what I've read. 
You get about four hours of battery life doing this continuously depending on the amount of activity. So something to consider. You can hook up, just so you know, you do have external power sources. You can hook up into these mirrorless bodies. So the Z9 will accept external power sources beyond the battery. So if you've got a power source, you could hook it up directly to that and it would run for, I mean, however big the, battery, the, the power source is. But I thought this was really terrific. I think this is a, a really cool update. Uh, I'm glad you stayed with it. You watched the whole thing. It's got a ton of applications. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun enjoying this. And the big thing for me is I used to use doing this type of setup. Sometimes I would set up a camera. I'd have a remote trigger, and every time it would come in, I'd try to press it. I could have used a third party. I will test it against a third party. But honestly, this worked very, very well. I, I, I don't know if I got every bird that landed there, but I am going to assume that every bird that landed on this perch was captured. It was just a matter of which direction they were facing. It seemed to grab the eye very well. Um, again, it looked like sometimes it grabbed the breast. The shutter speeds were a little slow. But I, if I if I tweak this out, I think I could really, really just nail this. So anyway, I thought this was a great, great update, especially for wildlife photographers. It's got applications beyond wildlife photography. But this auto capture, I hate to use the word game changer, but this is a really, really neat and really functional application. Um, I would encourage you, if you've got a Z9, get the software. Maybe it's coming to the Z8. I don't have a Z8, don't know. But um, it's really, really cool. Hopefully, they'll introduce this in some of the other firmware versions to their other bodies. I think people are really going to enjoy this. Hope you liked the video. Hope you found it helpful. Very, very practical. As I try to do everything, I like to actually get it out in the field and test it to see how it works rather than just show you what the menu and how to set it up. And I thought it was very, very, very impressive. So hopefully you liked the video. Hey, thanks for supporting this channel. Um, really, really do appreciate it. Thank you for all your support on it. It has meant a lot to me. And as always, hit that subscribe button down there, little bell for notifications. And hey, I hope we can continue to find inspiration wildlife together.